Numbers chapter 16. Now Korah, the son of Esar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, with Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took action. And they rose up before Moses, together with some of the sons of Israel, two hundred and fifty leaders of the congregation, chosen in the assembly, men of renown. They assembled together against Moses and Aaron, and said to them, You have gone far enough, for all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is in their midst. So why do you exalt yourselves above the assembly of the Lord? When Moses heard this, he fell on his face, and he spoke to Korah and all his company, saying, Tomorrow morning the Lord will show who is his and who is holy, and will bring him near to himself. Even the one whom he will choose he will bring near to himself. Do this. Take censers for yourselves, Korah and all your company, and put fire in them, and lay incense upon them in the presence of the Lord tomorrow. And the man whom the Lord chooses shall be the one who is holy. You have gone far enough, you sons of Levi. Then Moses said to Korah, Hear now, you sons of Levi, is it not enough for you that the God of Israel has separated you from the rest of the congregation of Israel? to bring you near to himself, to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord, and to stand before the congregation to minister to them, and that he has brought you near, Korah, and all your brothers, sons of Levi, with you? And are you seeking for the priesthood also? Therefore you and all your company are gathered together against the Lord, but as for Aaron, who is he that you grumble against him? Then Moses sent a summons to Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, but they said, We will not come up. Is it not enough that you have brought us up out of a land flowing with milk and honey to have us die in the wilderness? But you would also lord it over us. Indeed, you have not brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey, nor have you given us an inheritance of fields and vineyards. Would you put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. Then Moses became very angry and said to the Lord, Do not regard their offering. I have not taken a single donkey from them, nor have I done harm to any of them. Moses said to Korah, You and all your company be present before the Lord tomorrow, both you and they along with Aaron. Each of you take his firepan and put incense on it, and each of you bring his censer before the Lord, two hundred and fifty firepans. Also you and Aaron shall each bring his firepan. So they each took his own censer and put fire on it, and laid incense on it, and they stood at the doorway of the tent of meeting with Moses and Aaron. Thus Korah assembled all the congregation against them at the doorway of the tent of meeting. And the glory of the Lord appeared to all the congregation. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them instantly. But they fell on their faces and said, O God, God of the spirits of all flesh, when one man sins, will you be angry with the entire congregation? Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the congregation, saying, Get back from around the dwellings of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Then Moses arose and went to Dathan and Abiram with the elders of Israel following him, and he spoke to the congregation, saying, Depart now from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing that belongs to them, or you will be swept away in all their sin. So they got back from around the dwellings of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, and Dathan and Abiram came out and stood at the doorway of their tents, along with their wives and their sons and their little ones. Moses said, By this you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these deeds, for this is not my doing." If these men die the death of all men, or if they suffer the fate of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord brings about an entirely new thing, and the ground opens its mouth and swallows them up with all that is theirs, and they descend alive into Sheol, then you will understand that these men have spurned the Lord. As he finished speaking all these words, the ground that was under them split open, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up and their households, and all the men who belonged to Korah with their possessions. So they and all that belonged to them went down alive to Sheol, and the earth closed over them, and they perished from the midst of the assembly. 
All Israel who were around them fled at their outcry, for they said, The earth may swallow us up. Fire also came forth from the Lord and consumed the two hundred and fifty men who were offering the incense. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Say to Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest, that he shall take up the censers out of the midst of the blaze, for they are holy, and you scatter the burning coals abroad. As for the censers of these men who have sinned at the cost of their lives, let them be made into hammered sheets for a plating of the altar, since they did present them before the Lord, and they are holy, and they shall be for a sign to the sons of Israel. So Eleazar the priest took the bronze censers, which the men who were burned had offered, and they hammered them out as a plating for the altar, as a reminder to the sons of Israel, that no layman who was not of the descendants of Aaron should come near to burn incense before the Lord, so that he will not become like Korah and his company, just as the Lord had spoken to him through Moses. But on the next day all the congregation of the sons of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron, saying, you are the ones who have caused the death of the Lord's people. It came about, however, when the congregation had assembled against Moses and Aaron, that they turned toward the tent of meeting. And behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. Then Moses and Aaron came to the front of the tent of meeting, and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Get away from among this congregation, that I may consume them instantly. Then they fell on their faces. Moses said to Aaron, Take your censer and put in it fire from the altar, and lay incense on it. Then bring it quickly to the congregation, and make atonement for them, for wrath has gone forth from the Lord, the plague has begun. Then Aaron took it as Moses had spoken, and ran into the midst of the assembly, for behold, the plague had begun among the people. So he put on the incense and made atonement for the people. He took his stand between the dead and the living, so that the plague was checked. But those who died by the plague were fourteen thousand seven hundred, besides those who died on account of Korah. Then Aaron returned to Moses at the doorway of the tent of meeting, for the plague had been checked. Chapter 17 Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, and get from them a rod for each father's household, twelve rods from all their leaders according to their father's households. You shall write each name on his rod, and write Aaron's name on the rod of Levi, for there is one rod for the head of each of their father's households. You shall then deposit them in the tent of meeting, in front of the testimony where I meet with you. It will come about that the rod of the man whom I choose will sprout. Thus I will lessen from upon myself the grumbles of the sons of Israel who are grumbling against you." Moses therefore spoke to the sons of Israel, and all their leaders gave him a rod apiece, for each leader according to their father's households, twelve rods, with the rod of Aaron among their rods. So Moses deposited the rods before the Lord in the tent of the testimony. Now on the next day Moses went into the tent of the testimony, and behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi had sprouted, and put forth buds, and produced blossoms, and it bore ripe almonds. Moses then brought out all the rods from the presence of the Lord to all the sons of Israel, and they looked, and each man took his rod. But the Lord said to Moses, Put back the rod of Aaron before the testimony to be kept as a sign against the rebels, that you may put an end to their grumblings against me, so that they will not die. Thus Moses did, just as the Lord had commanded him, so he did. Then the sons of Israel spoke to Moses, saying, Behold, we perish, we are dying, we are all dying. Everyone who comes near, who comes near to the tabernacle of the Lord, must die. Are we to perish completely? Chapter 18 So the Lord said to Aaron, You and your sons and your father's household with you shall bear the guilt in connection with the sanctuary, and you and your sons with you shall bear the guilt in connection with your priesthood. But bring with you also your brothers, the tribe of Levi, the tribe of your father, that they may be joined with you and serve you, while you and your sons with you are before the tent of the testimony. And they shall thus attend to your obligation and the obligation of all the tent, but they shall not come near to the furnishings of the sanctuary and the altar, or both they and you will die. 
They shall be joined with you and attend to the obligations of the tent of meeting, for all the service of the tent. But an outsider may not come near you. So you shall attend to the obligations of the sanctuary and the obligations of the altar, so that there will no longer be wrath on the sons of Israel. Behold, I myself have taken your fellow Levites from among the sons of Israel. They are a gift to you, dedicated to the Lord, to perform the service for the tent of meeting. But you and your sons with you shall attend to your priesthood for everything concerning the altar and inside the veil, and you are to perform service. I am giving you the priesthood as a bestowed service, but the outsider who comes near shall be put to death. Then the Lord spoke to Aaron, Now behold, I myself have given you charge of my offerings, even all the holy gifts of the sons of Israel I have given them to you as a portion and to your sons as a perpetual allotment. This shall be yours from the most holy gifts reserved from the fire, every offering of theirs, even every grain offering, and every sin offering, and every guilt offering, which they shall render to me, shall be most holy for you and for your sons. As the most holy gifts, you shall eat it, every male shall eat it, it shall be holy to you. This also is yours, the offering of their gift, even all the wave offerings of the sons of Israel." I have given them to you and to your sons and daughters with you as a perpetual allotment. Every one of your household who is clean may eat it. All the best of the fresh oil and all the best of the fresh wine and of the grain, the first fruits of those which they give to the Lord, I give them to you. The first ripe fruits of all that is in their land, which they bring to the Lord, shall be yours. Every one of your household who is clean may eat it. Every devoted thing in Israel shall be yours. Every first issue of the womb of all flesh, whether man or animal, which they offer to the Lord, shall be yours. Nevertheless, the firstborn of man you shall surely redeem, and the firstborn of unclean animals you shall redeem. As to their redemption price, from a month old you shall redeem them by your valuation, five shekels in silver, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, which is twenty giras. But the firstborn of an ox, or the firstborn of a sheep, or the firstborn of a goat, you shall not redeem. They are holy. You shall sprinkle their blood on the altar, and shall offer up their fat in smoke as an offering by fire, for a soothing aroma to the Lord. Their meat shall be yours. It shall be yours like the breast of a wave offering, and like the right thigh. All the offerings of the holy gifts, which the sons of Israel offer to the Lord, I have given to you and your sons and your daughters with you as a perpetual allotment. It is an everlasting covenant of salt before the Lord to you and your descendants with you. Then the Lord said to Aaron, You shall have no inheritance in their land, nor own any portion among them. I am your portion and your inheritance among the sons of Israel. To the sons of Levi, behold, I have given all the tithe in Israel for an inheritance, in return for their service which they perform, the service of the tent of meeting. The sons of Israel shall not come near the tent of meeting again, or they will bear sin and die. Only the Levites shall perform the service of the tent of meeting, and they shall bear their iniquity. It shall be a perpetual statue throughout your generations, and among the sons of Israel they shall have no inheritance. For the tithe of the sons of Israel, which they offer as an offering to the Lord, I have given to the Levites for an inheritance. Therefore I have said concerning them, they shall have no inheritance among the sons of Israel. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Moreover you shall speak to the Levites, and say to them, When you take from the sons of Israel the tithe which I have given you from them for your inheritance, then you shall present an offering from it to the Lord, a tithe of the tithe. Your offering shall be reckoned to you as the grain from the threshing floor, or the full produce from the wine vat. So you shall also present an offering to the Lord from your tithes, which you receive from the sons of Israel, and from it you shall give the Lord's offering to Aaron the priest. Out of all your gifts you shall present every offering due to the Lord, from all the best of them, the sacred part from them. You shall say to them, When you have offered from it the best of it, then the rest shall be reckoned to the Levites as the product of the threshing floor, and as the product of the wine vat. You may eat it anywhere, you and your households, for it is your compensation in return for your service in the tent of meeting. You will bear no sin by reason of it when you have offered the best of it. 
but you shall not profane the sacred gifts of the sons of Israel, or you will die. Music 